Hey, what's going on guys? It's Alex and EJ, and it's this week's fishing report. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Yep. A lot of stuff coming up, predictions of what's going on, and actually a lot of stuff happening right now. Yeah, absolutely. And um, some things are a little uncertain because of the storm, mm -hmm. um, but there's some things that pretty much remain the same all the time. We'll talk a little bit about that. So we got pretty much in a rock fish and yep. what's, what's not. Before the storm, everybody was still fishing up north, the mouth of Patapsco, inside of Patapsco. Hodges Bar, all those typical places. And now with this rain, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, we're predicting might push them south a little bit because of all their rain. Right. Um, they did open up the dam. Yeah. So C careful with that too. So if you guys are trollers, mm -hmm. um, that dam, as you know, uh, all that debris coming through. So you want to go a little bit deeper, or you want to try something else. Right. Um, and Alex, if you don't mind, I'm going to talk yeah. a little bit about the bridge. Right. Um, so if you haven't fished the bridge before, or even if you have fished the bridge before. Um, it's always fish there. There's always fish there. Um, it's just a matter of, do you know how to catch them there? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to share some of the things that, that work for me at the bridge. Um, and primarily it's don't get stuck on one pollen. Um, I maybe three, four casts. And if I don't get one, I'm off. I'm yeah. moving. Um, again, you remember you won't mark fish typically at the bridge either because they're on those ledges. Yeah, right. um, so a lot of times guys say, I don't see any fish, but yet I'm seeing people pull, pull right. fish out. That's because the fish hang up on those ledges. The pollen goes down maybe 12 feet ish. Mm -hmm. um, you're in well, 60 foot of water. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and then here's some of the things that I use up there. Um, and, I, and I'll give you my secret as well. So I'm a big GI jig head guy. Um, I love them. And my go-to size um, at the bridge is one ounce. This is a one and a half, but this is the color that I'm trying to show you. And I've got another one here. This is another color. These, these two are definitely in my tackle box. Nice, nice. And as you guys know, the soft plastics all work at the bridge and you can skirt, you can not skirt. Right. Um, Boston baits are my favorite soft mm -hmm. plastic, me personally. Um, BKDs work. But if you're really having issues and you can't seem to get them to bite, this is my Ooh, secret weapon. That's here. it. That's that ticket. Yeah. I don't know what Berkeley puts in this. Is it? Is it right? There yeah. I don't know what is in this juice here, but even when the tide's not right, it just I gets can. Them going. Yes, I can get a reactionary bite. You basically put it in front of their mouth. Mm -hmm. They're they're smelling it, and and they. They tend to really that want to catch everything. I does. mean, everything. You know, when in doubt, throw some gulp out there. Absolutely. A lot of guys use works. Them. Sorry. Yep. A yeah. lot of guys use them for um, flounder, mm -hmm. but they work tremendously for rockfish. Right. Yep. Well, speaking about that, you know, talking about it a little bit more down south here, uh, pretty much we got, you know, a lot of schooly rockfish throughout the middle Bay Area. And then there's some bluefish, maybe a few mackerel mix in there. Uh, you know, like myself went scouting for them right around. The mouth of Eastern Bay mm -hmm. did not catch one, but there's been some reports of a few fish uh, moving up. Uh, you control for them, like we always talk about that. But right. if you're really trying to go for, you know, those bluefish or Spanish macro, the closest thing for sure, like a short ticket to get them getting into them is going to be the mouth of the chop tank. Okay. Uh, you know, like that's going to be the place you want to be at. And of course, if yes. you're you know light tackle person, yeah, that's what you want. Any kind of metal, but a lot of people like this, you know, classic. Sting silver. I mean, it catches a lot of things, you know, besides, you know, just mackerel. Uh, you got your bluefish, even speckled trout will hit this when they're suspended. We're not suspended, but when you get into some deeper structure and kind of jig them down, and for mackerel, just throw this out there and just burn it. The faster, the better. Yes. Alex, what are we looking for when we're, when we're, targeting these fish so we know they're there right. but are we looking on our electronics are we how are so we a lot of times this? what you want to do is actually just go out there and you know the good old saying find a bait the mm -hmm. fish will find you in a way mm -hmm. so a lot of times if you're not seeing breaking fish uh you actually want to fish the ledges and scan through those ledges either on an outgoing or incoming tide me personally like outgoing tides okay. right right at the mouth of a river where you know you have like that flow from the river coming up and then the bay and then meet up it meets up Find a point, you'll find some bait, and eventually those fish will come up and just start busting on them, or just sometimes they just hang around them. Gotcha. So you can do that, and you know, the electronics obviously are always your best friends because if you don't have one, then you're fishing kind of blind. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, that's the ticket for you know your max and whatnot. And even a little bit more south of there, they're actually catching a lot of different things. Okay. Uh, you know, we're talking about. 
flounder now. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Bull red sin puppy drum, uh, speckled trout, bluefish, Spanish mackerel. And this is all going towards that area of like Bloodsworth Island down towards Crisfield. And then on the western side, pretty much fishing the mouth of the Patuxent, uh, you know, um, Cove Point, like mm -hmm. Solomon's area, all mm -hmm. the way down to Point Lookout. And all those areas are holding a lot of these incised fish for all the inshore guys. I mean, cool. I was just showing you guys how my dad's been crushing flounder on those little yes. four inch gold mullet. And apparently that is the hot color. And I know you guys, if you guys read a lot about just fishing all about all around the area in the Mid-Atlantic, the new color, which is like the uh, salmon red, it's been mm. hot. Yeah, we've sold a lot of those over the last few days. Um, mm -hmm. Guys head, heading down to Ocean City, exactly what mm -hmm. Alex is saying. Yeah. And if you're fishing in shallow around, you know, um, just structure, uh -huh. rocks, that's the easiest thing I like to do, honestly, is just, you know, kind of follow into a uh, shoreline with structure, piers, mm -hmm. rocks, anything, and I'm start casting if I get there early in the morning. Some top water. Uh, this is an actual uh, kind of like replacement for me for my smack of junior. So that <laughs> I ran out, and this is actually good Lucky Craft uh, top water there, good size. Yeah. And then I'm also throwing uh, stick baits. And this is just not necessarily for rockfish. I mean, I'm catching you know, decent sized specks and redfish on them, just fishing shorelines in between, you know, anywhere between you know, eight foot of water and less than that. So that's always a ticket yeah. down there. And guys, if you've, if you've never fished these um, these type of baits before and you're a top water person, you're, you're, you're missing out on a lot. Yeah. These are a lot of fun. Um, crank baits, jerk baits. Yeah. Um, you, you pull them through the water, the, the, the bait's floating back up and mm -hmm. the fish hits it. And it's just as exciting. Maybe not as exciting as seeing that big explosion on the top, but, but you, you still see it. it. Oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. You yeah, feel that hit. But yeah, everything down there, it's pretty much like Kobe down in the middle ground. So apparently it's been hot right now. Yeah. Uh, chunking, mainly everybody. Okay. Once again, they're chunking, uh, you know, LY and throwing some eels down there right around the middle grounds. The target ship is going to be your best area for them. And mixed in in that, you know, target ship area, there's been a lot of reports of weak fish. So, you know, uh, pretty much it looked like a speckled trout, but they're not. So definitely check out, you know, the differences on those. So I have a uh, question for you. Mm -hmm. um, we're selling a lot of butterfish. Yeah. Um, we, we can't keep them in stock. I mean, as soon as we get them in, they're out the door. What, right. what are people using them for? That's offshore tuna fishing. I mean, that okay. was a, pretty much a good, decent bite out at the hot dog before the storm. Okay. Now everybody's pretty much back to trolling for the white marlin open. And of okay. course, you know, conditions haven't been the best out there. And you got the tournament going on. So you got a lot of boats out there for the tournament certain days. And, you know, some other guys are pretty much just going out there just to fish too. But... Gotcha. Tournament week, so we'll see what happens in yeah. the next few days for that for the White Marlin Open. Uh, not anything crazy yet. I don't think they've had, I think they might have one qualified White Marlin as wow. of now, but definitely the last few days they extended until Sunday, so that's going to be good to see what happens cool. in the last few days. Uh, other than that, snakehead fishing. Yeah. I know a lot of the guys here have been going snakehead fishing down in Blackwater, mm -hmm. and that is the ticket there. Uh, Transquake in all those rivers, apparently, everybody's on chatterbaits. Okay fishing you know pretty much just off the reeds all the grass and stuff and they're tearing them up with the white but right now the reason why we're showing is black and blue is because the water is going to get super dirty because of the rain the fish are still going to be there okay they're probably going to be biting a little more because they like that you know flow of the yep. water moving through there so black and blue is a ticket and uh, i mean we're talking about last week they were catching a good amount of snakeheads mm. uh like i said just quaking in the chumacamaco river mainly on subsurface not too much on uh, top water until you get into like you know dark time when it gets you know dark outside and then you can throw some frogs but that's been pretty good How, how's the minnow bite been on, on snakeheads we have had a couple right. guys come through the shop um talking about yeah using minnows down there if you're always fishing you know one of those things with snakehead fishing if you're short fishing and you're staying in one area that's the best way to do it because okay. you know you can't cover that much water and if you're on a kayak or on a boat and you want to cover water uh, the lures is a way to go because you know when you're fishing minnows you kind of have to sit there and wait gotcha. so it will slow you down and you know just like you were saying you were saying for <clears throat> rockfish you gotta mm -hmm. keep moving gotcha. same thing for snakeheads you know yep yep cover water and you will find a fish uh crabbing wise have you heard anything about crabbing i've heard crabbing is really picked up <clears throat> um in the severn one of the guys who works here actually mm -hmm. works a little bit with a commercial crabber um and they've been tearing them up 
Um, you know, same same yeah. sort of deal in that anywhere that five to ten foot mm -hmm. range. You just have to find your sweet spot. Um, for for guys like me who's a uh, recreational crabber, um, I actually split my trout line in two. Um, I'll run 600 foot in a little bit more shallow and, and another 600 in That's a little great. deeper. Yeah. yeah. Once I find them, I'll connect them together. Or I'll just lay them lay them next to each yeah. other or, or you know out from each other. Um, Magathy is starting to pick up a little bit too. Mm -hmm. um, my brother-in-law lives on on the Magathy, um, and he you know it's been bad this year for for the Magathy, and it's really starting to pick up. Now, That's which good. Is good. That's and, and the good. size of these crabs, I mean, they're nice and they're heavy. really nice. Yeah. Yep, yep. So I'm excited because yeah. I'm actually going to go Friday. Um, I'm probably going to go to the eastern shore side, to the eastern bay side, have my spots down there, and um, yeah, I'm excited. Yep. Well, I think that covers all for fish for this week, guys. Uh, like I said. Keep an eye out for debris out there, especially this upcoming oh, yeah, week. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then remember, uh, rockfish, we got one full week left of, yes. uh, of that for before the closure, which is Saturday, uh, Sunday, right? But Saturday is the last day you can. Saturday is the last day. It's the 15th. Mm -hmm. It's the last day you can fish for target rockfish. Um, and then we have a couple weeks off. Yeah. And then the next time um, we'll be out there getting them is in September. Yeah. So, which is exciting. Yeah, um, that's my favorite time of year. Yeah. To fish. So switch up to some of those and go for them blues and mags. And that's it for this week's fish report, guys. Thank you. Send us your pictures and everything. And you guys have a good one. Take care.